Hello and welcome to the homework review for chapter 8 for statistical methods. Um, these are the sections of homeworks that were assigned and these are the ones that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I may be going a little fast at times. So if you have a problem, re uh, stop, pause the video and rewind it. Also, this isn't the computer I normally record on. That's why it looks a little different. So, um, it's going to take me a little bit to get used to it. So, let's start with 8.2, question 1. That's what I mean about getting used to it. i got to figure out a way to pull these things off to the side. Okay, so let's get started here. And this is uh, 8.2, number 1. Okay, so you could pause the video and read it and then jump back to me. But this problem's talking about um, there's a claim being made that that they want more than 50%. So if they want more than 50%, we have to assume that it is 50% and then claim it's more than. Okay, so if you're responsible for de de developing this method that shows it's effective, of which p-value would you want? This isn't your p-value. This is the percentage of females from the population. So you want you want this method, okay? You want this me you want your method to work. So we want to prove this. If we want to prove this, we want to reject this, okay? We want to reject the null. That's the null hypothesis. And to reject the null, we want a small p-value. So all you have to do is look through these and find the smallest one. This is your p-values. Okay. So that looks like D is the smallest. Okay. Let's go to number two. Okay. So this is number two from 8.2. Okay. So here we're going to have to uh, set up a null hypothesis. So remember a null hypothesis is always the parameter. It's the parameter. Use one there. This is the mean. This is the mean of the population. Okay, so you kind of have to read this problem. The mean weight of the women who won the is equal to 120. So this is their claim right here, but they didn't give us, they weren't testing for anything greater or anything less than this, so this would be a not equal to. Okay, remember the top one's always going to be an equal, and this will either be a greater than, a less than, or a not equal to. In this case, they didn't give us any hint of whether well, they wanted it greater than. We're actually testing to see if this is it. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be E. Okay, let's go on to number three. This is number three of 8.2. Okay, the same thing. We want to set up a null hypothesis where um, the null is always going to be an equal and it's a percentage so it's going to be P okay so they're saying we're going to test for this uh, claim that more than 32 percent so if they say if they give us the more than then they're giving us the alternative if they say equal than then they're giving us the null so since they said more than they're giving us the alternative Okay, the top one will always be equal. I mean, there are a few cases, but in this class, we we keep that um, we keep that equal. So the answer will be it looks like this one right here. Remember, thirty-two percent is just point three two. Okay, so flipping pages, I'll just keep on going on here. Okay, so number four. Okay, so two-tailed test. So critical values are critical values are either z scores or t scores that are cutoffs, kind of like a p value. Okay, so we have some claim here, and this is always your this is always your null. See, because that's why we need it to be equal to something. See this equal right here. If I know if it's equal to, then I could say, okay, well, this is equal to that. Now critical values are these values over here. They could be these values over here. That says that if you go over here, then you would reject. Or if your Z statistic falls over here, we'd go ahead and reject. Okay, so we have to get comfortable. So two-tailed means that the the this alpha, the significance level, needs to be split in two. 
So this needs to be 0 0.03, and this needs to be 0 0.03. And since it's symmetric, if you find this one or this one, this one would just be positive, and this one would be negative. It'll be the same same thing. So we want to use stat crunch. Okay, in this case, I will cover my other sheet up. How about that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause and load what I need to here. Back, and to do this one, I just want to go to my calculator, go to my Z, because we're on, it says Z value, so that's our normal. Okay, and what we want to do here is we want to make this thing, this red right here, look like this right here. So this is where my percents are right here. So I'm going to make this look like 0 0.03. Remember, it's half a 6% because you have to split both of them up. Okay, and this needs to be a less than. There you go. So that's it right there. So since it's two-tailed, there's going to be two critical values. Okay, so it's going to be negative, what do I have to round to? Two. Negative 1.88. Negative 1.88, comma, 1.88, since they're perfectly symmetric. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is the same, pretty much very similar, but this one, they kind of, not try to trick you, but they, they give you the they give you the um, alternative. So the alternatives are not equal to. So when a not when alternative is a not equal to, we always know it's two sided. So I'm gonna so do the same thing we just did, but instead of having five percent, okay, instead of having six percent like the last problem, we have five percent. So these two things have to equal five percent together always put to get all put together so it's going to be 0 0.025 which is 2.5 percent 2.5 percent so i'm trying to find this this one right here and this one right here it's going to be the same number but just one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative Stop. you could always um, fast forward too if if you guys are comfortable doing this so this will be point zero to five, that's a less than compute. So that's that area right there. So that's going to be a six right there, right? Six. Okay, so I put one positive and one negative. Okay, let's go on to number the next one. Okay, so the next one says uh, I'm a number six. So on all these examples, um, we've been finding the critical value. Now, critical value is either a Z or a T, a Z or a T. Now, the P value is actually a percent under the curve. A P value is a percent. So you're going to get an X bar from the sample or a P hat. And you're going to turn these into a Z. And then the Z is what gives us a P value. Okay. So in this case, we had a statistic. They turned the statistic into a Z, which is over here at 148. Or did I say T? Z. If I didn't say Z, I meant Z. So this is your Z score. That's your Z score. It's not your critical value. Okay. It's not your critical value. This is a this z score is obtained through these statistics here. Okay, so the p value would be this area over here. Okay, and that's because it's one sided. It's one sided. The right tailed, right tailed. So I'm here, so this is 1.48. Not on there. 1.48. And since it's one tailed, I want a positive. So see how that looks like that? So it's 0 0.06, 0 
That's the p-value here. Okay, two more to go. Okay, so this is the same problem, but it's two-sided. See how this is, they, they kind of, they give you their alternative and it's two-sided. So what we want here is, see, in case you're not sure, the, the null would be, hey, is this thing one-fourth? The alternative is, hey, um, is it not one-fourth? So the middle is going to be one-fourth because this is always the null. Now the problem is, as I said, we're testing if it's not equal to one-fourth. So I'm not sure if it's going to land over here or over here. So in this case, it landed over here because because um, I got this z-score of negative 1.95. I got this z-score of negative 1.95. So I'm going to go to the z's, which this would be zero. Okay, this is just a formula, the way they did it. Okay. The way they find the z is they take the statistic minus, in this case, one-fourth, because that's the one-fourth, and they divide that by whatever the standard deviation of the statistic is, okay? And that would give us this one, negative 1 1.95. That's why I knew it came over there, not 5. So we need to find this shaded region, but it's not a one-tailed test. It's a two-tailed test, so I have to multiply it by 2. You have to get this and this, okay? Okay, so I need to find less than, less than, negative, negative 1.95. And I want to compute. Okay, now remember, it's this times 2. It's this number times 2. Because you have to account for the other side too. I'm not sure if I can do this. Point zero two five five eight eight zero six times times two. So it's going to be what do we have to round to? Where did my problem go? Round to four. So point zero five one two. Point zero one zero five one and that goes up to a two. Guess how that guy down there. Okay, so it's important to know the idea of p values um, for number eight. Um, the claim was that it was less than, so that the claim's coming in as less than, so that's actually going to come up to be, um, that's going to be our alternative. So the null must have been that it was equal to. Okay, so the initial conclusion was we rejected this. So if we rejected this, that must have meant we had a small p-value, smaller than our significant value. So if we reject that, then that means we take this. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the merit is less than that? Yes. Or there is not sufficient evidence. Well, if I reject this, then that must mean I found enough evidence. Okay, so that's it for chapter 8.2. For chapter 8.3, We'll go do chapter 8.3. Chapter 8.3, I'm going to do 1, 2, 5, 6, and 10. Okay, so if, if we're getting into one sample proportions, which we did go over in class. So this is 8.3. We are going to do 1, 2, 5, 6, and 10. I think I went through these and covered them. So if you remember, this is our P, which we don't know about. This is from our population, 
if I reach in here and take a sample, we're going to get at some subjects. And these subjects, it's categorical variables. Categorical, so it's they have a choice, so they're going to get so many successes and so many failures. So whenever I take a sample, we find p hat. p hat, p hat equals the number of successes divided by n from the sample. From the sample. That's why we call it a statistic. Okay, so it looks like that's what number one's asking us. So you could pause it and read the question. Okay, so we had we had people and they had to answer yes or no. Okay, so 1,254 said no and 499 answered yes. And I had one more, which was 360. Three had no opinion. Okay, what is the sample proportion of yeses? Okay, so what percentage said yes? So p hat would be the number of x's, which would be the number of successes, which is 499, divided by the total n. So how many people did we end up picking? Okay, so we had, um, I'll just go ahead and do it out. This is 1, 2, 5, 4, plus 499 plus 363. Okay, so this would be equal to 499 over 2116. Okay, so something went wrong because this number should not be greater than 1. Okay, so this is better. Okay, 2, 3, 6. Remember, it's a P hat, not a P. Okay, so next we're off to 2. Okay, so this is kind of similar to what we were doing before, and we want to we want to set up these no hypothesis. Okay, so a survey of 900 households. So whenever I do these problems, I always want to get the information, um, especially n and x. Okay, the number of successes and the number of people sampled, and then set up a null. So it says to claim that more than 15%. So if they give us the claim as a more than, we know that goes in the alternative, which is going to be more than 15%. Okay, P is more than 15%. So the alternative, or the null must be that's equal to 15%. Okay, so which one is that? There we go, right here. Okay, now the test statistic we have to we have to go ahead and um, run run StatCrunch, but I just want to kind of help you out just in case you want to try this by hand about how they actually do it, just in case they don't let you use StatCrunch. I think they do on one of them. Okay, so it's, it's Z equals. It's the statistic that we got. So the statistic that we got was this B hat, which was 170 over 900. Okay, so it's 170 over 900 minus this is it's P hat minus P. It's what we got minus what we think it should be. What we're claiming that it is. Okay, divided by the standard deviation. Um, we had studied this before, which is the standard deviation of all your P hats. The standard deviation of all your p hats, if you were to take all your p hats, which is the square root of p, p, 1 minus p, divided by n. So this formula right here would give you this thing. We're going to go ahead and use stat crunch. Okay, 
we'll run the whole test from here. Okay, so we want to go stat. Now we're in proportions. Whenever I do these problems, you're going to have to start thinking, am I in a proportion or a mean? One sample or two sample? Okay, so it's a proportion. I have one sample and I have summary. So we need to put how many successes? There was 170. We had 900. Was this enough to say that it was statistically, statistically significantly? Is, is this fraction, 170 over 900, far enough away from 15%? To say that it was more. Okay, so we run this test, and the null hypothesis should be the same as your null hypothesis, 0.15. I'm testing to see if it's greater than. I could go ahead and calculate. So here are my results. 3.27. This is pretty pretty far out there, so it's going to probably be a reject. Well, you can look at the p-value. It's a really small p-value. Okay. Okay, so with the small p-value, that means we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm rejecting this 15%, which means I did find enough evidence that was greater. We did find enough evidence. Okay, so this is kind of like a conceptual question. A survey of 900 households This is like more of a you know, what do you think? Um, use those sample results to test the claim that more than Okay, the only problem I could see here is maybe asking people if they use email by asking if they have any, you know, these people might be a little biased because they're using email to ask them a question about email. But let's go ahead and say, uh, let me just say A. Nope. All right, so B. Okay. So next we're off to number five. Okay. So number five. So you have to go through here. Okay, there's a method for testing for babies. That's not, no, that's a one. Okay, there's a claim. So there's a claim of alpha is 5%. We want to find out what, how many people we checked, so how many babies were born, 435, and how many of those babies were girls. Make sure you pause these questions or read them before you get started. Okay, and there's not an alpha of 5%, there's an alpha of 1%, so we're going to have to need more evidence to reject, more evidence to reject the null. Okay, the probability of a baby being born, we're testing to see if it's greater than 50%. Okay, so is my p hat, this is basically what you're doing if you're not really sure. Okay, let me just run this real quick and figure out what this is. 250. Okay, so this is equal to 0.575 essentially. Okay, so the question is they did something they get hold on one sec. Five seven four. Five seven four. That's what I thought. Okay. So we're actually essentially just saying, hey, is this far enough away from here? Is this big enough away from here to say that's statistically significant? So we have to run a statistical, we have to run a hypothesis test to figure this out. OK, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and click this one. This is equal to, and I'm testing to see if my method was greater. Okay. Okay, the test statistic. Let's go ahead and run our stat crunch. Okay, so like I said earlier, we're running the, we're doing these problems. I'm thinking, are we finding averages? Are we are we finding averages? Or are we doing means? In this case, we're doing averages. They're run as percents, so it's going to be a proportion. So this is a one sample proportion, and they gave us our summary data, which was um, we got 250. And we had 435. Our null is that. We want to test to see if it's greater than that. Go ahead and calculate. So Z, Z is 3.12. I'm doing my Z right here. Looks like we're going to find enough evidence. The p value is 0 0.0009. Okay, now since our p-value was so small, it was less than our alpha of 1%. It was less than, this is our cutoff, 0 0.01. And our p-value of 0 0.0009 is actually smaller than 0 0.01. So we go ahead and reject the null. If I reject the null, I'm taking that not to be true. So I found evidence that this, this is greater than. There's a vision to support the claim the portion of growth is a bit different than. Is there more there? Should be greater than because we didn't have a significantly difference. It says greater. So this should say greater, but we'll go with the different. Okay, so the method did appear to be effective because because it was significantly diff different than 0.5. Okay, let's jump to 10. Let's go to 10 here. Okay, we have about about seven or eight problems after this one. Okay, so we have an alpha of five percent. So stop and read the problem. And we want to always set your null up if you're doing these problems. We're doing percentages. And you notice there's no p hats here. These are p's. We're talking about our population here. You get our sample data and make a decision about our population data. Okay. Out of how many people did we pull? We pulled this many adults and found 24% of these. 24% of these people smoke cigarettes. So you may need to find X. So X is actually equal to 0.24. That's how you find a percent of a number. That's what X is equal to. Trouble with that times, 0.24. So 243, just go ahead and round. Okay, so I have my N, I have my X, I have my alpha. Um, we want to use it, okay, that's less than, we want to claim that's less than 25%, or is it 25%, okay? Equal and less than. Equal and less than. Okay, the test statistic, we're going to go to do the same thing. It's going to be a negative. It's going to be a negative number this time because this this percent, the p hat. This is my p hat, two forty three over one zero one one. Just run this. Just I'm just showing you why it's going to be a negative. Okay, so this is 24. This is essentially 24%. So the Z statistic is always P hat minus P over the standard deviation of P, P hat. So this is 0.24 minus 0.25 over this number right here, which will always be positive. So you have a smaller number minus a bigger number, this Z will be a negative. All that means is that we the Z falls over here somewhere. 
So our p-value is going to be this. This is our p-value. Okay, so that's just how we do it. So you're not just, you know, just doing a hundred percent everything in the in the stat crunch and not having any idea what, you know, why you're doing anything. I'm trying to keep my stat crunch up. It's got stat crunch up. Okay, so this is another proportion, one sample. We have summary. Okay, we surveyed. Okay, how many how many successes do we have? We had 243. That's where a lot of mistakes are found. They people have trouble trouble determining what percent that is next. What percent 24 percent of 1,011 adults are. Okay, so I need this to be 25, and I'm, I'm testing for a less than, testing for not greater than, but less than. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so this time my statistic was negative point two decimal seven one, and my p-value is point two three. So they did this way to show you to show you one that's not going to get rejected. Okay, because this is a this p-value is high. So what this means is, if you look at this graph over here, that means that it was really close to the claim, because this is the claim right here. The claim's always in the middle. So what you got was not far enough away from the claim to reject it. Okay, so we didn't find enough evidence that it was less than 25. We did not find sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 35. Okay. Okay, so if you take an internet survey, it would be bad. Okay, so it'd be bad. If you ask people to say something off the internet, this would be bad. Okay, so that's 8.3. We got 8.4 and 8.5 to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and do 1, 2, and 5. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be getting into some mean problems. Whenever you see mu, that means we're dealing with means and not uh, not percentages. Okay, we're going to do one, two, and five. Okay, so um, pause the tape and read through this tape. Okay, read through it to make sure that you guys know. Um, I, I, I kind of know this is a mean problem, and I'm looking to see if we took one sample or two sample. Okay, so I have one list of data, so this means that we probably took one sample. Um, I'm looking for stuff like the alpha, so I know to compare that to my p-value. I'm looking for a claim, okay? I'm looking for a claim to set up my null, my null hypothesis. I'm looking, sometimes they'll give it to me in the null, and sometimes they'll give the alternative, so I'm checking to see if that the mean is less than 140. So that means the null is 140. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this. So we could open right. Oh, let's let's answer the first one. Just you know, is that that? Okay, so now let's go ahead and open this stuff up in StatCrunch. We'll hit this little square and say open in StatCrunch. Um, yeah, we have more to do. I was gonna say, is that all they're asking? So let's continue this and see what they want. Okay, this is a test statistic. So this is another thing I'm looking for too, is uh, the Z. Is it a Z or a T? They're telling us here it's a, a Z. Okay, so if they're telling us a Z, I'm looking for the standard deviation of the population. Okay, so the standard deviation of the population is right here, 10, because I know it's a Z, because if they didn't give us standard deviation of the population, then we would be doing a T, 
okay so that's important so now we're not going to be doing the proportion anymore so we're going to be doing z's okay and they have to do z's and t's because we're not sure which one it's going to be we have one sample and we have data okay so we have data they gave us the data in this variable one so I'm going to highlight that click standard deviation and put 10 there this is my population standard deviation next I need my null hypothesis to be 140 this is my null hypothesis and I'm testing to see if it's less than so this not equal to needs to be a less than okay and then we can calculate and we'll have all of our data so we have a z value of uh, negative 1.47 negative 1.47 Oops. Negative one point four seven. See if that's enough for a rounding. Good. Our p value is point zero or zero point zero seven zero eight. Is that what they want for? Okay. Okay, so Let's go ahead and continue. Let's, let's talk about this, but what, what type of decision are we going to make? Okay, so you have an alpha here. We have an alpha of, of uh, 5%. So we have to compare our p-value with that, our p-value with, with alpha. Okay, so my p-value was 0 0.07. My alpha is 0 0.05. So is that greater than? That's greater than. So since the p-value is here, we, we don't have enough evidence to reject. We failed to reject failed to reject okay so we did not have evidence we didn't have evidence to prove this okay continue okay so we failed to reject there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim there is sufficient evidence to support the claim so let's just read what they're saying here sometimes the claims come in nulls and sometimes the claims come in, in alternatives Test the claim that it's less than five. So we rejected, we failed to reject. So there's not sufficient evidence to support their claim. Their claim was that it's less than. There's another part. Can it safely be concluded that a person does not have hypertension? Um, this one's kind of close. See, this 7 is pretty close to this 5, so I'm just going to say no. But it could be wrong. Okay. Okay, so that's 1. Let's go to 2. Okay, so this is number 2. Number 2 on 8.4. Okay, so pause it and read it. Okay, so I have 45 students. Sample mean. Sample mean is an X bar. And they gave me the sigma. I'm always looking for a mean and a standard deviation, always. Okay, and I'm in seconds here. Write my units down. These are three things that are interesting. Because now I know if I'm doing a, a mean, it's, it's always, you think, a mean or a proportion. Then after that, this is always Z. But if it's a mu, it could be a T or it could be a Z. Okay? Um, that's if this is known. If this sigma is known, then it would be a z. So in this case, since that's known, we know this. Okay? And we always have to look at this number to make sure that it's greater than 30, around that range. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a null here real quick. Their claim is that it's equal to 60. That's equal to 60 seconds. And the alternative... Okay, so they didn't say greater than, they didn't say less than, so this is a two-sided. Okay, and really it's just important and you're using StatCrunch. Okay, so let's do this. I say it's this first one. Okay, so let's see if I have this hidden somewhere. Let's go ahead and open StatCrunch. Now, this is a Z test. This is a Z test. 
The proportion already, the proportion, it's hidden. When you do proportions like we were doing before, it's hidden. They're, they're doing z-tests. You just don't see it. We have one sample, and we have summary. It's important because they always ask for these same three things. They ask for the sample mean, which is 57.3. The standard deviation, which since we're in z's, they know it's the that one there, 9.5. 9.5 seconds. And the sample size, we took 45, I think. Forty, forty students, not forty-five. Sorry, if I said forty on the other one, sorry, didn't mean that. Forty-five. Okay. Next, we need to put the null here. The null is sixty, and I'm testing for a not equal to, which is a not equal to. Go ahead and calculate. So the z is negative one point seven, one point eight, because you have to round the two. If you round the seven, that goes to zero. Okay, the p-values here. Can I cut and paste off this thing? Let's see. I'm sure you guys are way better at this than me. Let's think I can. Okay. Now with that p-value, that's a, that's a high p-value. That means that's a high. This p-value is higher than my alpha of five percent. So we are going to fail to reject. Okay, the smaller the p. Um, the more evidence against the null. So we failed to reject. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. Nope, there's not sufficient or there's not sufficient evidence to reject the claim. We do not have enough evidence to say that it's different. We do not have sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. That's worded funny, but that should be it. Okay. So pause these and read through these, okay, so you don't have to have me going through them with you. Okay, to me, it looks like it's relatively close, but we don't have enough evidence to say that it's different. Okay, so we don't have enough evidence to say that it's different. I'm going to go with this first one. You guys could read over that and go back. Okay. Let's go to number five. Number five. Okay. This is 8.4, number five. Okay, sample 27 jelly beans. Okay, so we have 27. So since this is less than 30, they have to tell us that they were normally distributed, which they do. Okay, mean weight. So these 27 produced a mean weight of 0 0.8540 grams. And assume this is known to be 0 0.0565 grams. So we know we're doing a Z. Our alpha is 0 0.05. And the null, the null is, hey, is this thing equal to 0.8525? And it's equal then. They don't tell us if it's greater than or less than. It's just, hey, is this equal to this? Okay, so let's go ahead and find our test statistic. This may be the one that doesn't allow you to open up StatCrunch. So the test statistic is um, is this. It's a z. It's a z value. So it's going to be z equals. Okay, um, x bar minus mu over the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. That's the formula. So it's 
0.854 minus that's my x bar minus the mu which is this 0.8525 and divided by 0 0.0565 divided by the square root of 27 okay so this is going to give you a number um, I'm not sure where it's going to fall but it's going to be a z value so then you need to take this number this is either going to fall here on this side or it's going to fall on this side let's say it falls on the right side so whatever if it falls here then you're going to find this I'm not actually going to do this one um, I'm just going to tell you how you find this number and then let's say it's over here oh but we know we know we know point 854, 0 0.852, so it will be on this side. So whatever this Z comes, it's going to be a positive number. It's going to be positive, so it's going to be over here. So once you do that, go to your normal stat calculator, your stat calc normal, and put this Z score in right here. Okay, make sure it's greater than, and put that Z score in and find this percent. Okay, whatever percent you get, whatever percent you get, times it by two because it's two-sided so you have to count from that these two things once you times it by two these two things together here this equals your p-value you should be able to make a decision from your p-value if your p-value is less than alpha is less than alpha in this case it's just five percent so if this number you get from these percentages is less than this you would reject reject if the p-value is greater than alpha then you'd fail to reject okay so that's how you do it they're taking stat crunch out of it all right so let's go to the last section which is 8.5 see on time how are we doing 47 minutes that's a long time okay Not sure why I'm spinning there, but you guys could go ahead and fast forward through this. Um, we'll be getting started here in a sec. We are going to 8.5 and number two or number one. Okay, so um, remember the degree of freedom is always one less than your sample size. Okay, the degree of freedom is one. It's not the distribution of freedom, it's the de number of degrees of freedom, which is one less than the sample size. Okay, that's important. All it tells you is it's really the disease. Excellent. Okay, let's go to number two, and I did this one before, so let's do a similar one. So, so whenever you do these, you're going to have some decisions to make. It's either a T or a Z. If it's a T, that means that, that you don't know the population standard deviation. That's unknown. If it's a Z, then this is known. Okay? Now, the other, the other thing is if N is less than 30, then, then the population, then the pop has to be normally distributed okay if n is greater than 30 or equal than 30 then we are okay that doesn't matter okay we could use a normal we could use normal if it's less than 30 the population is normal so we could use a normal okay because everything has to be normal so here let's go through these n is 20 so n is 20 so they have to tell us the population is normal the data comes from a population that is normally distributed Okay, 
So that's checked off. Okay, next we have to know if. So I don't know. I don't know mu, but they're telling me sigma is 1.83. So this is known. So this is known. So it would be a Z, which is a normal. Okay. Let's do another one here. Um, it's the same concept. N is 26, so they have to tell us the population is normal. The sample data appears to come from a population with a distribution that is very far from normal. Okay? Uh, sigma is unknown. It's a T, but since N is 26, N is 26, okay? N is 26, we don't have enough. We don't have enough to perform this test because this is not normal right there. So it would be a neither. Okay, let's go ahead and go to four. Okay, so these are gonna be very similar to the other one. I already know the answer is B or D because the top one has to be um, um, equal sign. I already know the bottom, I already know it's B without even reading the question because I know this has to, this cannot be an equal down here, okay? Okay, so go ahead and stop and read the problem. And whenever it's a mean problem, Okay, so we have a mean or a proportion. And we have, um, whatever we want to do, we want to find the N, we find the X bar, we want to find S. If they don't give us, if the sigma is unknown. We want to know if we're doing a T or a Z. That's in sigma. Okay, they took 25 cigarettes. So they took 25. And they got the card content. The sample mean was 18.6. The standard deviation was 3.82. Notice they didn't say population standard deviation. They just said standard deviation. Okay, and the alpha is my cutoff's 0 0.05. And we want to test to see if it's less than 21.1. We want to test if it's less than. So since they gave us a less than, they gave us the alternative. So we need to test that it is. That mu is equal to 21.1. We have to say that it is 21.1. Test that it's less than. Okay. Okay, so the test statistic, they already tell you that it's T right there. They already tell you that it's T, so that's a that's a sign that we have to go to our T. Okay, so stat. We wanna go to T. We have one sample and we have summary data. It's gonna ask us for those same things that I'd written down before, which was what was my sample mean, which was 18.6. My sample standard deviation was 3.82. And my sample size, I go ahead, go ahead and pulled two. Now if you notice it says 25, it's less than 30. So they should say somewhere that that's normally distributed. So normally distributed population. Next, and we're looking at 21.1, and we want to try to show that it's less than. Okay, so right there, you could go ahead and calculate. So my T is under 3, so negative 3.272. Okay, the p-value is right here, 0 0.0016. 0 0.0016. Okay, so you already could tell that this is less than, this number is less than our alpha, so we did find enough evidence. We, we can reject. Okay, so they want the critical values, okay? They want the critical value. So this is very similar to what we did before. This is very similar to what we did before. And the critical values are right here. Okay, so instead of Z's, these are T's. And the critical values are these guys over here. The T star here and the T star over here. And my alpha is 5%, so this has to be, oh, it's only one-sided, sorry. 
So since it's only one-sided, I'm not interested in this one. It's a less than, so here's my critical value, it's just one of them. And it's where this is, 5%. It's not two-sided. If it was two-sided, I'd have to put 2.5 over here. Since it's only one-sided, the whole 5% goes over here. And this is the T, the T value. So go to your stat crunch. And then it's going to be, it's not two of them here. It's going to be calculators. I'm going to go to my T. I took 25, so my degree of freedom is 24. And I need to put in 0 0.05 and make it a less than. And this is my critical value, negative 1.71. Negative 1.711. Negative 1.711. That's three digits. That's my critical value. Okay. Okay, so since my p value was really small, okay, we can reject. So it's either it's either B or D. There is insufficient. Nope. There is sufficient evidence to point the claim to meet total is less than. We always find evidence for a change. We don't find evidence for no change. Is there more? Okay. So it's pretty far under 5%. I'm going to go with that one, that they're effective. Okay, filtered cigarettes. We found evidence that the filters were less than. Oh, nope. All right, well, I'll let you read through that one because I want to get through the meat of the problems first just so you guys could get the, uh, the hang of it. Six. Okay, so here, if I look at these, I know that the answer is going to be this one. So we're looking at something less than. It's at a 5%. I don't have that many. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be somewhere it should be normally distributed. It's normally distributed. Um, they didn't give a sigma, so it's going to be a T. So let's open this up. Okay, so this is a T. So stat, T statistic. They gave us data. So that's our data. Next, now you guys should be reading this problem. And calculate. Okay, so our T here is. See, they went and they got this data, and this data produced a mean that created a T statistic at negative two point one seven. How many decimals to three? So that looks like one, two, three, that looks good. Okay, what's the p-value? 0 0.041. So that, let's see what our alpha is. 5% five, five significance. This is a little bit under 5%, so this would be a reject. This would be a reject. Okay, they want critical values again. So we went and took, how many did we randomly sample? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So my degree of freedom would be five. Okay, now there's, it's not going to be the same because every um, this is probably going to be farther out there. It's going to be farther out there because every degree of freedom gives you a different curve. Gives you a different curve. So this number over here needs to be five percent. It's one-sided and so less than. Less than one sided there. So negative 2.0. Okay. The final conclusion. Okay. So the p value is small, so we want to reject. There is sufficient evidence. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the population is less. Yep. That should be right. Okay. I wouldn't say that it's strong evidence because it's really close to alpha. 
So I'm going to just say this. Maybe wrong. You guys could uh, test that. I don't want to take five minutes going through that. If I sat there and read these things three or four times, I'd be able to get them. But I don't want to take your time away. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the last one. P value. Okay, this one they take they take uh, they take stat crunch away. So I'll show you how to do it. I'll set up the formulas for you. Okay, so um, a coin mint has a specific specification that has a mean weight of sample of thirty. So we sampled 30, 37 coins. Okay, and the coins have a mean weight of two point four nine four. For eight grams, and the standard deviation that's from that that same sample, which is 0 0.01195 grams. So this is S. So this came from that standard deviation. So what that means is that this is a T. Okay. So our alpha is five percent. It's a T. Let's set up a null. Our null would be um, the decimal sample is 2.5. Did they say greater than or they say greater than or less than? I don't think so. So this would be a not equal to. Okay. So now we want to go into this T. And the T is going to be X bar minus mu divided by S divided by the square root of N. So very similar to the other formula, but instead of sigma, it's an S. So it's going to be 2.4994. Four eight minus two point five divided by zero point zero one one nine five divided by the square root of thirty seven. This is going to give me a t. So you need to go to your stat, your calc stat t. Okay, this is going to be degree of freedom of thirty six. This is going to give you a number. Okay, this number is going to fall on the left side. This is going to fall over here somewhere. So you're going to go to your your stat, calc, t, and it's going to come up like this, and you're going to put this t value, whatever you get right here, that's the t, okay, and um, you're going to do a less than, you're going to put whatever number you get into this t, and this is going to give you a percent, that's the p value. This is the p-value. That's the percent that comes out over here. You're going to take this per, this p-value and multiply it times 2. That's your p-value. You're going to multiply it times 2 because you have to account for the other side because it's a two-sided. Okay, take that number, make your decision, and you should be fine. Okay, so that's it. It's a long video. My computer's about to die. If you made it all the way through, congratulations.